So in this video, we're going to be talking about quantum well uh, optical devices. And these can be any optical devices. They can be LEDs, they can be lasers. Um, for now, we're going to talk about lasers just because that's been the focus of this course so far. Um, but we've been dealing with uh, just basically what are called bulk lasers. So uh, this is just some bulk or some chunk of semiconductor. And if this is a laser, then maybe it's got some gain. Uh, and we're, we're also probably going to have some mirrors on the side. So I'm drawing the mirrors in red. And we're probably going to want to attach some wires to this thing so that we can inject uh, a bunch of free electrons into this system. Uh, but this was, this was the beast that we've been dealing with up to this point. Um, it turns out that for, for reasons we'll get into, it's actually way more efficient um, to use, and virtually all devices now use this, uh, instead of just a bulk region, uh, to have quantum wells. So these super thin uh, wells, which I'm going to draw in, uh, I'm going to draw in white, uh, separated by quantum barriers, uh, which I'm going to draw in green. So here's a barrier, here's a barrier, and we'll go over exactly what this means in, uh, in the next video. Uh, and you might have many quantum wells, so uh, let's, let's shade this guy in white. Shade this guy in white. Uh, you might have multiple quantum wells, in which case this is uh, called, as, as you might expect, uh, a multiple quantum well device. And these, of course, stretch uh, all the way through the, through the device, so I'm just going to briefly draw them uh, like so. But... Uh, so now instead of this entire region having gain, uh, or this entire region being optically active, uh, so this is where the active region uh, comes in, um, only a specific subset of the quantum well is optically active. So these wells themselves uh, have some, well, I guess I've drawn the wells in white. Um, these wells have some gain associated with them. Uh, but this bulk material, the rest of the device, does not. So uh, this, this device might actually have some absorption associated with it. And if this is a laser, we're probably also going to want to attach some mirrors on either side of this device. And we're going to want to attach some wires somewhere so that we can inject a bunch of electrons. So it's virtually identical to the bulk device, and it follows virtually the same, uh, same rate equations uh, same dynamics, everything we've dealt with thus far. Um, and the main difference is how do we figure out what exactly the gain is of these quantum wells and what the gain of the, uh, let's call it the effective gain, for example, of the overall active region is. And so what are the main differences between these two uh, devices? How are we going to treat quantum wells differently than we treated bulk devices? Um, well, one is the density of states or the reduced density of states. So in the bulk case, we know that it's proportional uh, to the energy minus the band gap. In the quantum well case, it turns out to be proportional to a constant. So it's no longer a function of energy. It'll also turn out that uh, bulk devices also have a higher uh, threshold current. Uh, quantum well devices have a lower threshold current, which is one of the reasons we love them so much. And the main differences are really in the underlying physics. So the transition matrix element, uh, which was what determined our absorption coefficient, that was sort of the, the strength of the interaction between two different energy levels with two different wave functions. Uh, this was just equal to some constant. Uh, let's call that m squared in the case of the bulk case. Uh, and I, I wrote down an explicit formula for what this was. In terms of material parameters, you can look up. So the band gap and the split off energy and the effective mass of the electron. Um, but in the case of the quantum well, it's actually going to be considerably more complicated. Uh, fortunately, we get to use all of the results from the bulk case. So it's still proportional to this constant m squared. Uh, and I'm going to call this the optical matrix element. Uh, and this mt, the transition matrix element. So in the bulk case, they were the same. Uh, in the quantum well case, they're going to be different. So mt is equal to 
magnitude or magnitude mt squared is equal to magnitude m squared, uh, which is what mt was in the bulk case, um, times this factor beta. Uh, and this is a factor usually less than one, but some it's, it's around one. Uh, and this is gonna capture the polarization dependence. Uh, so this is just some unitless constant and figuring out what exactly that constant is turns out to be pretty, pretty complicated. And this is also proportional uh, to the inner product of the wave functions in the quantum well. So let's say a uh, wave function in the conduction band, or let's, let's call this uh, in light of what we're going to learn in the future, the envelope wave function uh, in the conduction band and the envelope function in the valence band. And what exactly this means will, will become clearer as we go through the next videos. Um, but briefly, this lets us deal with the quantum mechanics, uh, the macroscopic quantum mechanics, of, if you will, of quantum wells. So their quantization of the wave functions and how these bleed out into the edges of the, of the well. That's sort of wrapped up in this transition matrix element. And the last major difference is that because we have multiple energy levels inside a quantum well, uh, we can have multiple uh, what are called subbands inside the quantum well. So in the bulk case, we only had uh, one conduction band and one valence band. Uh, in the future, we'll, we'll learn that that actually isn't the case, but for now that's the case. Uh, so we had a valence band and a conduction band, but in quantum wells, it turns out we're gonna have a conduction band and a valence band, and then another conduction band and another valence band, uh, which are gonna depend on the energy levels of that quantum well, which we'll go over in future videos. But in the bulk case, we only have a single uh, sub band or a single uh, band from the we can only transition from the conduction band to the valence band so without further ado in the next few videos we're going to go over the quantum well uh, and how to model it why it's why we want why we want quantum wells and how to model them using uh, the infinite potential well model uh, which is the most commonly used just as a first pass and then the finite potential well model and this will be in the in the next few videos. And then we'll start to use what we've learned here to explore this matrix element and then to figure out how quantum wells work in general in devices. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.